guys. How are you today? I found the seven vital prayer points for the upcoming election, our nation and leaders. And forgive the ads and all that, but I wanted to just kind of briefly go through this because I think it's interesting and something to think about going into election. Have you voted yet? I voted early and they said that so many people have voted early this year. So if you haven't voted yet, please get out and vote. All right, I'm just going to go through all this, even though it's very interesting. This is from Crosswalk. Number one, that our nation would turn back to God. May God help us. We need him desperately to renew our hope and restore our land. We need his forgiveness and healing. We pray that his spirit will sweep across our nation and draw many out of darkness. So we pray that may, that believers everywhere would draw close to him and seek his face like never before. And remember the verse, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Focus on that. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Psalms 33, 12. Okay, let's skip on to number two. Pray that we should be faithful in praying for leaders and those in authority. Um, we know that their decisions affect us too. May God give them wisdom and courage as they lead our nation. May he give them a desire to listen to his voice and follow his ways. May God have his mercy, appoint principal godly men and women into positions of authority in our nation. And the word says in 1 Timothy 2, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. Have you thought of that? So let's try to remember to do the petitions and prayers and intercession and thanksgiving for our leaders. Okay, there's more. Proverbs 29, 2. Okay. Number three, that we should recognize God's sovereignty over all. His word will remind us that he's the one that ultimately has the power to position all those in leadership and to remove them. So some will say, then why pray? Well, he does answer prayer. And if it's an overwhelming thing, maybe yet he will change his mind. Okay. Um, if you want to read this, it's on crosswalk.com. Um, so, because it's God who changes the times and seasons. He sets kings and disposes them. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. Um, Daniel 2.21. And there's more. And number four, that we would recognize the real battle is not fought against what is seen, but what is in seen, unseen. The real enemy is not a person or the party, a political party. It's Satan himself and his dark forces that oppose God and fight against truth. The enemy's goal is to steal, kill, and destroy. And he wants nothing more than to see us waste our energy and time just battling one another. So let's try to stay away from his evil plans and stand against the attacks through the power of Christ and his word. All right. And then Ephesians 6, 12 tells us, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Number five, that we would not succumb to worry, fear, or defeat. Don't go weary and give up or tune out. Our voices are important now more than ever before. Headlines, news stories can often incite fear and worry, and they do. Um... And we felt powerless, but I'm skipping through. God's words remain true in it all. He's the answer. He's the light that breaks through the darkness. He's the one who sets free and has the power to restore our nation. Psalms 112, 7, they will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting in the Lord. And then I have to throw in, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, pray, have petition with thanksgiving. Re pre re pre bleh, sorry. Present your request to God, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 6, through 7, 6 and 7. Number 6, that we would pray for those in authority who are unjustly attacked and accused. We pray for God's protection to cover the, his people. And he would surround them with favor as a shield. That the plans of the enemy would be thwarted and truth would be made known. That as believers, we would be discerning and quickly recognize what is real and what is a lie. I'm hurrying because my dogs need to go out. <laughs> Okay, no weapon that is formed against you will prosper, and every tongue that accuses you in judgment you will condemn. 
Okay, number seven, that our hope would remain in the Lord, that we would recognize his great power, that we would trust him and believe that he is able and nothing is impossible with him. He alone is where our real hope is found, not in leaders, not in the economy, not in the condition of the nation today or even in the future of tomorrow's. Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed for I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe even if you were told. Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds. Lord, repeat them in our day and in our time. Make them known in wrath. Remember mercy. Okay, so whoever your candidate of choice may be, we can rest in this. God has a plan. He is not pacing the heaven's floors, worried about who will win or what the latest polls show, shows. He called us to pray, to be salt and light, and to have a voice. We, tr we can trust that his the outcome is in his hands. Remembering this truth on which our nation was founded, we are one nation under God. Our hope comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth, and he gives us the strength to keep moving forward. Psalms 20, uh, 62, 5, find rest on my soul in God alone. My hope comes from him. Dear God, thank you. We thank you for your great power. We praise you that you have set us free from the clutching grasp of sin and death. Would you be with your people, extending your grace, granting your freedom, giving your protection and empowering with your strength. We ask that you would cause an awakening of your presence as never seen before. We ask that your name be proclaimed, that all plans to silence truth would be thwarted and crushed. We pray that many would come to know you as Lord and Savior. We pray that many would see your light. We pray that you would open blind eyes and release those still imprisoned. We pray you would unify your people for the glory of your name, that believers everywhere would rise up and stand together. We pray for all those in authority, that you would give them wisdom and discernment as they lead. We ask that you would point, appoint strong, faithful men and women to serve this nation and our people. We pray that you would heal our land and shine your face on us. Our times are in your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. So true. So this is from crosswalk.com. If you want to go back and read it thoroughly for yourself, that's where you find it. I love you. God bless you. And I will be back. Have a wonderful day.